Hello again ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. Today you find me in the Heart of the Tribe Gallery. I thought it would be a good idea to come down today and have a look round because it dawned on me that I've never actually done a film about this place despite having worked with them on several projects, not least of which is the amazing mural trail. Anyway, I've come in today because it's, open, it's an open winter exhibition, which means that there's a selection of artists here that we can show you. And to show us around is the ever fizzing, ever wonderful, Kim Coles over there. <laughs> Hello. So, here I am with Kim. Hello. What a wonderful exhibition this is. You've got Thank some you. beautiful... There's one piece in there that you and I both love, which we are there going is. We'll to... We'll have to have a close look Close a look at that. <laughs> But you, you've agreed, thank you today, to show us around That's the heart right. of the tribe. Um, I basically wanted to get um, a history of the place and a look at where it's going and obviously to showcase some of these artists here. Cool, yeah. So let's do if that. you can show us around, that'd be fantastic. Of course let's I can. Let's go. Um, well, I'm going to start here in the first room, which is where we have the biggest selection and variety of stuff going on. It's kind of the little shop area of our gallery. Most of it we try to just keep visual arts, whereas in here we have some more. Other things, we have our prints, we have our merchandise, we've got these really cool t-shirts that I'm modeling right now. This is by one of our artists, Melanie Thompson. She's got these slogan t-shirts based on an artwork she did responding to lockdown, um, where she did a project in her front garden, actually right here in the middle of town. And each day she'd put up a new phrase or slogan and it encouraged conversations, you know, distance with the distance, all the rules and everything. But these slogans are things that came out of it. The, the we need each other. There's another, I do not want normal. And then later on in the, in the um, kind of process, the We Shall Adapt came out. So we've got those. And we've also got these, this is my favourite, the hoodies. They're really soft and warm, but aren't they cool? And mm -hmm. a little nod to Glastonbury and our love of Glastonbury and the logo. I'm just going to hand the, the camera to Kim for a second here. Oh, yeah. This is completely... Uh, coincidental. Coincidental, but there you go. But I'm look how wonderful mine. they look. And aren't they soft and warm? Oh, aren't they lovely? <laughs> they are very good quality. <laughs> right, I back to the talented. art. I know you're here for the art, really. So right. uh, we have a bunch of artists that we work with, around 20 that we have a closer relationship with. We work mainly with local artists because we like to build a relationship with them and we like everyone to support each other, so um, inspire each other, you know, get to know each other and be part of the, the team and the tribe here. Um, some of the things you see around here, we have some work by Jim Pilston. Jim is actually the furthest away. We'll give him a little bit of a cheat because we just love his work so much. He works with recycled stuff. Most of the things that he uses, he either digs out of a skip or people give him leftover bits of paint and stuff. Um, and he creates these amazing sculptures based on like stories and folklore and stuff and always varied, always different, but always awesome. Uh, and another 3D artist we work with is um, Penelope. Penelope, who is called the Itinerant Bizarium um, in, on the internet, if you wanted to have a, have a look. Uh, she works with textiles. She's got a history of um, theatre costume design. Sorry, it took me a moment there. Uh, and she kind of takes that knowledge and her love of vintage fabrics and, and techniques. And, and she's very hands-on and she creates these stories and these characters. This is actually a little bit more unusual, but quite often she creates these kind of puppet-like characters and she gives them all personalities and backstories. It's really lovely. Definitely worth having a look at. Um, and Sue, of course. So Sue is our resident ceramicist, one of, we have two. We also have the lovely Donna. Um, Sue works, uh, Sue's work, sorry, is inspired by the, the plants and the feelings she gets from walking around her, her home, which is, was Glastonbury until recently, now it's Butley, but the, the lanes and the, the local fauna that she comes across, if you look at her work, a lot of it features the plants and, and stuff that she has around her when she's walking. Um, and then let's, let's move through slowly. Oh, here we go. Next, I'm just going to go organically through the gallery and talk about the things that we come across at the moment. So like Gabriel said, this is the Winter Open. Hang on, I'll show you. A little flyer, the Winter Open, which is on until Christmas. It's our annual, um, annual group exhibition where we invite artists that we don't normally work with to come and show their work here because we like to be able to provide an opportunity. And obviously, we have to work within our limits, but this is, this is our way of saying thank you for everyone wanting to, to be part of what we're doing and, and give them the opportunity to exhibit in a professional space. And it's been really, really positive. Every year we've had a great, great response and always had a really interesting bunch of artists. 
Um, so this year, including a few of our core artists that we work with all the time who have some work here, we have over 40 artists who are exhibiting in this show. Gemma is one of the, the core artists that we work with often. She's incredible. She's, awesome. She's a superstar, honestly. She's really consistent. She has this really lovely, simple, graphic, but quirky um, lino cut prints. Um, and they just have that, they have that touch of odd, which people like, you know, and, and for me, the characters, I, I love them. I, they're, honestly, I would hang each of her pieces on my wall. Um, we always have a selection of Gemma's work on display uh, alongside the other things that are going on. So let's move forward here. We'll start with this uh, young lady. Uh, hopefully I'm going to pronounce this correctly because we only met briefly, but her name is Aya Kikawa. Um, Aya, she's Japanese originally, I believe, um, but she is based in London, which again, we're honored that somebody from London wanted to exhibit with us. So this is one of her pieces. It's def definitely different to the, the stuff that we normally have on display, but I really love the texture you can see in the um, in the etching print, which goes over the top of this lovely image, and it has a really delicate feel. You can see the Japanese influence in that, actually. Let's go through and have a look at the main room. Right, so this is our main exhibition space. Um, it's the biggest room we have, so it allows a bit of space to, to view the work. Um, and in here we have the winter open. <laughs> um, there's quite a few different artists on display. Some from Glastonbury, Delphi uh, is a, a local artist. Um, she, she paints a lot of uh, local landscapes and kind of um, views in the woods. We have some tours and stuff, but a lot of it's also quite neutral and, and could be anywhere, you know, anywhere exciting. Um, we also have my favorite piece, which we'll come to in a minute, stuck over in the corner there by a wonderful artist called Michelle Dash, who we've just discovered. Um, obviously, I'm going to start here because this is the one that kind of goes, oh, wow. Uh, this is by an artist called Terence Wilson Fletcher. Um, he's relatively new to me, but I do believe he's, he's from Wiltshire. Um, he has painted these incredible supersized pieces. Um, they, he, hmm, where shall I start? So Terence tells me that his main thing is, is activism. He, ha he, he is an activist and his painting is part of that for him. Um, he tells stories and has, you know, things to say through his work. Uh, like I said, he's new to me, so I'm still familiarizing myself with his work, um, both the activism and the, the painting work. Uh, but for me, what always grabs me is color, and he is very, very good at using color. Um, I love the characters, I love the faces, I love you know, I can see the texture in the paint and there's lots of these little things that remind me of stuff. And, mm. you know, I'm sure he has his story, but for me, I can find my own story in there, you know. Uh, but yeah, Terence, we have this piece and we have another piece in the other room, which we're going to have a look at in a minute. This one's called Targets. Ah, um, it's called Targets because I was here on the opening with mm -hmm. Julian um, and we were stood here transfixed, counting up, working out if they were... Like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, like, here we go. They're everywhere. Absolutely. And they're hidden. Some of them aren't obvious. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the eye. Yeah, absolutely. And then the other and thing here. is, who's this? And why is he poking his head through there? <laughs> What's going on? Uh, um, we, sh we, we were convinced there's messages in this painting. Oh, there definitely is. We just couldn't work out what they were. Okay, here in our sneaky corner shelves, we have another exceptionally wonderful piece. This is the protest pangolin. Uh, this is by Lucy Hepworth. She just makes these lovely, very clean and simple, but wonderful shapes and creatures. The pangolin, and then here we have a bird seed bowl. Now, I'm going to be very careful 
But in this bowl, if you look inside, she has made individual little seeds inside. And fruit, I don't know, it's just very lovely. And these two beautiful little birds sat either side. I really like applied art, I think that's what you call it, when you have something that is not just creative, but it has a function. And things like this, this bowl, it's, I, don't, I, could, I love it. All right, so I'm gonna move around the room okay. and just talk about each piece as I come. Ian, this is by one of our core artists, Ian's James Burkett. He is based in Wells. Um, this is actually inspired by uh, a TV program he watched with his nephews, as far as I can remember, um, about the moon making a baby. So oh, okay. this is about making a moon baby with loves. Um, I thought that was quite playful and nice, but I love the colours he uses in his, his lines and stuff. This, this one here is by Johanna Frieda Becker, and it is just this beautiful botanical piece. It's called Let It Be. There's this lovely little bee in the corner. I think that's a, a nod to the kind of Save the Bees movement, which is very important. Uh, I just, it's the colours, the texture, the way it makes me feel. This is a garden that I would like to have, but I really love this piece. It's um, acrylic on canvas, and it's uh, the one we chose for our flyer because it spoke to me quite, mm. quite a lot when I first saw it. Um, we're going to move over to... We, are we skipping, Michelle? We're going to come back to this? Come we'll come back, back to, to this one in a moment. This is Delphi. Uh, Delphi's a lovely lady. Uh, we became friends recently. Her work is currently on display at Strode for the winter, if you wanted to have a look at some of her larger pieces, but we're lucky enough to have this diptych uh, there's a piece in the window called Paradise Lane. Again, favourite spot of mine in Glastonbury, so I really like that one. Um, and we have this one here of the tour, obviously. Um, yeah, Delphi, I mean, I don't really need to say much. It speaks for itself. Texture, colour, really nice use of colour. Um, there's some lovely stuff she's done of the Avalon marshes, and she's pulled all the purples out of the trees and stuff. It's really, really worth taking a look at. If you're around, Strode Theatre have a really good... Um, uh, calendar of events on over the winter. You can always pop in and check in there for you. This is by uh, um, Melanie Breer. Melanie is an incredibly talented artist. Um, she paints large, ethereal, powerful women. It's quite dark and mythical and mystical. Uh, this is quite unusual for, for her style, but it, we felt it, it fitted very well with this collection of work. It's a beautiful piece of the Green Man. Again, speaks for itself. But again, Melanie is an incredible, exceptionally talented artist that I recommend checking out. Um, we're going to skip past this as well because we're coming back to it. The beautiful Karen works with ceramics. We have a couple of pieces. We had a lovely piece by, hers last, by her last year as well, The Life Cycle of Frogs. And this year we have The Life Cycle of Ladybirds and The Life Cycle of Dragonflies. They're really nice. They're really earthy and really raw and tactile. And for me, I would like to build this into my garden, like mm. a little outline. It'll be so like lovely. Wall. And the pond. Oh mm. my God, it'd be so good. Um, a self-portrait by Gossia Rosniak. I'm hoping, sorry, Gossia, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, this, I like this a lot because it has a kind of ghostly feel. Um, and you can kind of draw what you need to out of it. It's, it's, it's emotive. I, I know that it's a self-portrait, but it's also kind of anonymous. Um, and I love the way she's really loosely kind of put the paint on and you can see the, the, the thickness of it in different ways. You know, the light bit there. It's just lovely. Very nice for me. Um, moving on. This is the only piece of hers we have in the show, but we've done Delphi. So let's talk about Graham Hawkins. Graham Hawkins, also known as Steel Quirks. So if you wanted to look him up, um, he works mainly, from what I can tell, in steel and concrete, but also with some wood and the last piece we had of his had velvet in it as well. So he kind of mixes his steel work with other kind of raw materials and, and creates these rather lovely, bold um, pieces. Although we do have a piece in the window that I urge you to check out. It is a, a crow on a skull. So it's very different to these in the way it's been made and the way the metal feels, you know, it's much more jagged, so to speak. Whereas these, I feel it's all quite kind of safe and soft. This is the birth of an idea, lovely concept, and a heart plip. It's like a drip and, um, and the, the top of the drip is also shaped like a heart, really lovely. Uh, Such is life. Bird and Banner by Matt Lochlin. Again, I'm just going to emphasise, these are artists that we don't, haven't worked with in the past. A lot of these artists are exhibiting here for the first time um, as part of the Winter Open. 
um, which is really exciting for us as well because it introduces us to new people and new work um, and it kind of widens, widens say, our is this scope. kind of a doorway to some of these people editing? It editing, is, yeah. yeah. So usually each, each uh, winter open that we have, there's always a couple of standout artists or people. Even it's, sometimes it's just the relationship we have with them and their work and, and how it kind of feels like it, it would fit for us. So um, basically, if it fits and it wows, they can yeah. have their own exhibition in here quite it, shortly it, it, after yeah. coming Well, in. I mean, yes, there's a development process, but yeah, we, we generally, the people that we tend to build a relationship with start out as artists who are exhibiting in our winter open, mm. which is nice. It kind of, like I said, it introduces us to new people um, and, and just, you know, it, it puts stuff on our radar. It's great. Yeah. So we're going to have an exhibition in February and March. Uh, working with some of the artists that have submitted work for this show and are on, on show now, we will invite them to, to display more work in the springtime, um, which I'm quite excited about. Let's come over here because this is actually really cool. Here we have possibly my favourite piece. No, 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 my favourite 2D piece because we all know my favourite pieces ever get there. We're going in a minute. Um, Michael Hayter is this one, it's like these wonderful illustrations that are a little bit uncomfortable, but totally awesome. Mm. Uh, it's pen, ink and watercolour. Uh, again, there's stories. I, I'm not sure if he has a particular story that he's working from or if he kind of makes it up. But for me, I like picking my own stories out of this. This is my favourite in particular. Love these little angels uh, climbing out of the sun and all these characters carrying on. I couldn't figure out, are they potatoes? Are they boulders? Or are they crocodile eggs? Mm. Any thoughts? It's just, just these little guys and they're all doing their job and there's God knows what's going on over here, this person. But yeah, Michael Hater, I'm a huge fan. It's kind of playful, it's odd. This one's a little bit less dark, but these ones have got a little dark edge, which, which definitely appeals to us. Uh, this screaming little baby makes me a little bit uncomfortable, but I kind of like that too. But yeah, really lovely, lovely paintings. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, I totally have this in my house. Uh, shall we move across? Another new artist that we haven't worked with before. This is Grant McGregor. These are wonderful charcoals of um, famous artists. I'm sure you'll recognise this is a portrait of Warhol and this is a portrait of Bacon, Francis Bacon, Andy Warhol. Uh, really lovely. This is one of those, you know, when we get submissions, they come in these tiny little pictures on a screen and we have to judge, make decisions based on, on an idea, essentially. Um, and sometimes they arrive and it's just... It's even better than we expected, and this is a perfect example of that. I, I don't know if I wasn't expecting them to be so big or so, but I really, I, I'm, I really kind impact, of yeah. yeah. When they when I when I got them out of the bag, like unwrapped the the bubble wrap, I was really like wowed by mm. them. Really powerful portraits, and I think it's nice because the faces are familiar. You know, when you when you're um, doing portraits, quite often it's of people that other people don't know, so it's nice they're familiar, and I can I can connect with them. Now this, Norman Parker is a, is a gentleman, he's based in Street. He's exhibited with us in all three of our winter opens. He is an exceptionally talented painter. These are oil on canvas. You can tell he's obviously heavily influenced by the surrealist movement, mm. especially Dali, you can see here. Uh, I love it. Um, I say that a lot, but it's gonna be, I did pick the work, so I'm gonna love it, aren't I? <laughs> Slightly I love him and I love it. Everything he, he is consistently exceptional, and I really hope to be able to exhibit more of his work in the future. Really interesting collection of work he's done called Hundred Views of the Tour. I think he's published a book, maybe worth looking up. Uh, just yeah, just interesting, unusual, surreal, but but top notch. This intrigues me. Yeah. So again, a new artist, Jeffrey Howe. Um, it's what it's cut i don't know if you can see it but it's not painted on these these sh the the mm. tree looks like i'm just deciphering this i do not know but it looks like a print of some sort and then he's cut the paper and added these shapes so there's there's a little bit of of depth with the t paper thickness you know and he's moved things um it's called don't cut protect i imagine it's from a, a larger series because they're each numbered uh, I come from a graphic design background, so for me, the use of colour, the use of shapes, the, the use of negative space really 
It, I'm a huge fan yeah. of black, white and red. Yeah, me too. Just really Especially lovely, really graphic, but, but also kind of you've got the, the organicness of, of the tree. Mm. But yeah, lovely. I like it particularly when it's black and white with just a tickle of red somewhere. Just almost not in, you know, it's just a tiny little thing. Mm -hmm. I think that looks good. Do and you know what I think? What? I think, do you really, really think everybody wants to know my opinion about all this art? You can skip the bits where I'm just chitter chatting and have a look around. Okay. <laughs> so here we have Norman, again, yeah, Norman Parker. Um, similar style, obviously. Um, different use of colour, but again, just flawless, really, that's all I can say. Mm. Flawless. So, the elephant in the room. Oh, the favourites. So, we, this exhibition and this open call has introduced us to a lady. Oh, sorry, I'm touching the microphone. Um, has introduced us to a lady called Michelle Dash. Now, Michelle makes things out of ceramics and she mixes them with other things that she finds and makes and paints. Um, she has created these lovely 3D, they're like object shrine-esque things. I'm, I mean, I don't even know how to describe it, but this one's titled The Three Graces. Um, and it's just wonderful. I don't even know why I love it so, well, I do know, I don't, but look, I, you just have to see it and you'll see all the little things. You've got these little masks and, and the trees growing out and they're all different, but that, and the detail is exceptional. You've got the eyes and, and these wonderful, I love that they all have different nipples. That's very real. Everyone has different, different nipples and the wallpaper that she's chosen. And if you look in here, not only has she made these wonderful characters that are like holding a mask, but there's a head in there as well. And she's painted the, it's like the more I look at it and the outside, it's just phenomenal. And this isn't even the best one. So I'm going to bring you from this phenomenal piece to this. This object that Michelle has created is possibly the best thing I have ever seen. <laughs> like ever. It's so wonderful. Um, I'm sure you will have all gathered by now that I like things to be a bit weird. This, is, this ticks all my boxes. It's called Keeper of Songs of the Dark, and I'm going to describe it to you, even though you can see it. It's, it's a wooden box. It looks like an old box um, that has these kind of openings. It's got little compartments in the back. It's got little feet. It's just delightful. And inside is this ceramic woman with ears and two severed heads, who I don't know if she's been breastfeeding them. Might have been. Could be but they're all they've all got their mouths open i'm guessing it's because they're singing and then behind the, the heads are everywhere and there's the, and they're all they're just awesome this one's got spikes this one's got like it's open and the brain's coming out this one's got holes in this one's like a fish man this one's got bare ears this one's got this really cool knitted hood that one's got like a beak and there's bits of beehive and mirror and and that one's got glasses and I just want to have this in my house forever. <laughs> Honestly, I, Michelle, you win for me. You have won everything. <laughs> so we'll be seeing more Michelle. I really hope so. I really hope so. You never know. <clears throat> but yes, for me, clear, clear number one spot in my house. I'd like to clear an entire section of my living room and create a shrine to this piece. Right, for some more enthusiastic art talk, come this way. I'm going to stop you here, because we don't want to miss this. This is Len. Len is one of our core artists. Uh, he's from the North originally, but uh, he's based locally now. Um, he creates abstract, abstracts, sorry. Uh, always very colourful, always very expressive. Uh, he paints a lot to music. Um, he is a very talented man and, um, and his work is very interesting and I love the textures and stuff he creates and the layers he builds up. He's a very interesting person to watch paint because it's really unpredictable what he's doing and he doesn't really know what he's doing until he's started. So it's a, it's a fun process to watch. 
Um, here we have another new person who we haven't worked with before. Obviously, I'm, I'm going to say I picked her for the, for the local connection. I do really like her, her take on the tour. This is a reduction lino cut. Um, they're quite tricky and clever. Uh, I thought this was really, really well executed, and I love the texture in the ink. It's got really lovely texture going on. So, um, it's not often that you see a lino cut with that many colours, so it's, um, mm. it's fun. I like it. Uh, another local superstar, this is Sarah Trenchard. Sarah is, um, sorry, Sarah paints a lot of her adventures that she goes on with her partner. It's a lot to do. She says she likes to paint what it feels like to be in nature. Again, she's wonderful use of colour for me, spot on, uh, great textures and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's always playful, it's always fun. Uh, she's painted a couple of really cool murals in town as well, there? going back to the mural trial thing you were speaking about before. Uh, worth taking a look at on Jacob's Ladder. There's an especially um, special one. Uh, are we going right or are we going this way? You're in charge. Okay, I'm going this way. Here we go. The corridor. Um, we... I don't... I'm not going to individually critique each and every piece because we will run out of time and you guys will get incredibly bored but I would like to just show you another selection of work by artists whom we haven't exhibited before um, you'll see it's a huge variety of style um, some like this one by Ruth Baker exceptionally detailed and exceptionally talented uh, you can't really get a feel for it from um, from a video again this is one of the pieces that when we unwrapped it you really are blown away by the technique and what she's managed to do. This is burnt into wood, by the way, So, she, and, and, and then she's added this lovely silver leaf. But, but the actual image, she has burnt with a, with a hot bit of metal, and just what she's managed to achieve is really quite special. Um, the wonderful Gertie, David Goddard, another of our, of our regulars. Um, mosaics by Marcel Bacchus, Paula Fitzgerald, and her <clears throat> lovely organic kind of curvy women. Uh, some mixed media by Rob Chung with a bit of a street art inspiration. Very talented graffiti artist. Some lovely lino cuts by Maddie Casey of Cats. Really playful, really cute. This one is just so lovely. It makes me want to have a cuddle. My personal favourite is the frog. Again, a little bit more unconventional. Uh, sorry, I don't know if he's a frog or a toad, but either way, love him. Some water droplets again by her. Uh, Rowena. Rowena's another one of our superstars. Rowena paints these really lovely kind of story, uh, folky and bohemian inspired uh, entities. They're a little bit ethereal. They always have these kind of spirit or shadow animals and it's really, really lovely. And she also does that lovely black, white and red stuff. She does do Which, the black, Again, we were talking, I do love those colours together. <laughs> yeah, and she's, she's great at mixing things in with her paintings. Quite mm. often her paintings have stuff on them. Um, David Bottom and his, um, and his Penguin Books ideas. Nice and playful. Uh, an unusual style for a lino cut print here by Heather Fox and some smaller work by her. Again, cute and playful. Really like this guy. Mm. Um, uh, Alan Backwell. Another regular exhibitor in our winter open. Lovely landscapes. He goes to Cyprus a lot. His, his colours are very Mediterranean. This one here, this one here, I was very interested in. This is by Susanna Crook. It has earth pigment. So it's on wood, but the colour isn't paint. And that's what fascinated me. Really cool. Lovely texture. It actually feels like, it looks, sorry, like it, it would feel like a rock. Um, this is by Aya. Um, Aya Kikawa, again, same uh, lady who did the piece in the front. Yep, delicate. It's got that delicate feel. Um, and she has used, um, on this print, she's done a woodcut, but she has had a laser cut her woodcut. So it's exceptionally accurate. You know, it's... it's well, Almost photographic. Perfect, yeah. So you've got this wonderful Flower of Life woodcut on there that's, that's absolutely perfect. Right, let's walk down this side. Coming back, uh, Andrew Smith. A local artist, welcome to Bohemia. Really, really cool. I love the colours on this. For me, the yellow one. Um, Sarah, painting our garden. I don't know if you've visited our garden, but if you haven't, it's just there. It's a bit wintry right now, but if you come in the spring, I promise you, you'll love it. Sarah painted this one in uh, the end of the summer, so it was still kind of flowery and green, which was nice. Um, this is by local artist Mark Kelly. Uh, Mark is a very talented painter who... I have been familiar with his work for a long time. He 
It's very expressive. This one in particular, really lovely thick paint. Um, but for me, he's painted some really nice kind of scenes of Glastonbury-esque characters and, you know, like the high street. I've got a lovely print of his. I wish I had the original. But, um, but yeah, no, Mark, Mark's one worth looking out for. I think he has some work in other parts of town as well that you could uh, take a look at. Um, new people. Mark hasn't exhibited with us before, by the way, but hopefully he will again. Um, Sue, Sue Pearson, really lovely textured. So she's made, um, it's like an, a, a, a collage with the acrylic through. So you've got the texture of the paper underneath, making the trees kind of feel quite 3D and the background's very atmospheric. Uh, Rippling by Jana, Joanna Slade, lovely brushwork there. Oil on canvas, she has one in the window that's pretty cute as well, kind of got a bit of a, um, a Van Gogh feel. Mind block there for a moment. This one here is a textile based. So the entire picture is made out of fabric and thread. So um, there's these kind of pieces of fabric that have been sewn on in all sorts of directions. And I think in here there might even be some straw or some grass. It's really, really lovely. But the detail in this that she's managed to create just using thread and, and fabric is quite exceptional. I love the delicate little moon in the top as well. Right, we're going to go this way. We've got these two other little exhibition rooms. See, it's a bit of an art TARDIS. If you haven't been here before, a lot of people don't realise that alongside the front space, we have the three main exhibition rooms, the corridor garden, and there's another space at the end, which we'll go to later. Um, in here, we have another of Terence's wonderful pieces, the authoritarians. I mean, speaks for itself. Again, some collage work. Uh, Rory's one of our... Um, one of our resident artists, Rory has a lot of stuff going on in his work. There's always more to see and you never see it all the first time you view it. Most of the work that we have been exhibiting has been oil paintings, um, but recently he kind of branched out into this uh, AI assisted collage, which is really cool where he uses, um, within his collage he uses pictures he's created through AI and then he combines that with found images and also bits of this is a McDonald's bag and such like. So yeah, it's really cool what Rory does. And I like the way he's kind of transferred his way of telling stories from a painting into this new style. And the AI assisted collage that kind of goes against the point of mm. AI, doesn't it? It's a bit of a funny thing. Um, uh, Dame Garson's game, this is by a chap called Richard Wood. Sadly, Richard's not with us anymore, um, but his talent is unbelievable, or was unbelievable. Um, we were lucky enough to have a little exhibition of his uh, earlier in the year. Um, and this is one of the pieces that we still have and we wanted to hold on to because we just think it's pretty phenomenal. Uh, one of mine, ta-da. Um, yeah, I'm a photographer and I work with long exposure light painting. So for the, for the winter show, I just wanted to show something new, but some of my more recent work, um, this is uh, all done in camera. I don't do any digital editing, so it's a, a person on the other side of a sheet that I have lit through the fabric. Um, and I've used a handheld light source to create, during a long exposure, to create these kind of wispy lines. Uh, here we have- Before Kim goes on, I would like to say, as a photographer, I do like light painting. <laughs> and <laughs> this lady is the best light painter I've come across. Yeah, well, you've got you. a book out, haven't you? I do have a book. Yeah, there's a book available here. Um, I wanted to create a book so that there was uh, an art, uh, people could affordably have a copy of it and be inspired by it because it's, it's, um, it's got a broad variety of ideas mm. and techniques. So it's, it's a fun thing. Light painting's a fun thing to play around with. Highly recommended, mm. especially in winter because it's dark a lot and you need it to be dark. So I'm working my way into an invite so that I can go and video this taking <laughs> place. Because I tell you, light painting with cameras is fantastic and it's really, really interesting how it's done. So, I will show you one day. Yeah, okay? I'd like that. Right, Marta. Uh, Marta has exhibited with us before. Uh, she's based in Bristol. I think she's Spanish originally. Marta just has this really wonderful kind of luminous pop art style. It's got a lot of um, in, a graphic influence. Again, my favorite of hers, by the way, first of all, I'm just gonna point out this really cool mother data augmented reality with the baby and the virtual reality and all the phones, kind of nice. Um, but for me, this is the standout piece. It's called The Coven. And I like to imagine myself and my friends would be this bunch of witches if we were a bunch of witches. Here they are, the coven. Just the luminous pink witches. I'm, I'm totally into that. 
And this person, I, I'm the one with the belly person. That's me. Tool. You're a tool, Eloise Lifton. Beautiful screen print. Um, she, her work kind of, when I was looking at it, it looks very much inspired by old traditional um, print techniques, but um, commercial print techniques rather than hand um, art, fine art print techniques. So she uses a lot of half tone kind of, it's interesting, very interesting. I would be very interested into how she does it. Now here we have, oh, we have a bit of a variety in here. Um, peacock and in memory of St. Rita are wood carvings by a local lady called Celia Dixon. Very, very talented lady. Um, I was told that to create the texture that she's managed to achieve on here, because you can really see the grain in the wood, she sandblasted it. And I always thought it was a pretty cool, after, I'm guessing after the carving, I thought that was a pretty cool idea because it's really softened all the edges and given you like, it looks like it's aged. It's almost love like it. terracotta almost. Really, yeah, really lovely. But um, so Celia's work, and then we have another, um, another regular, Cameron Scott, uh, he is kind enough to let us exhibit his work each year as well. Cameron's actually a very uh, a multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary oh, blimey, that's a mouthful, artist. He works in several mediums, also in collage and stuff as well. Um, but a lot of, of wood relief carving, of which this is one, Leaving Home. Um, some lovely acrylic paintings by Patrick Burke. Really, really kind of gentle and ethereal um, women. Uh, so these two sculptures here by, are by um, local artist Mike Gravatt. He's also Glastonbury based. He works in various mediums. We've exhibited him before again. Um, his, his stuff is really, really lovely. He did some very playful um, ones with card and painting and stuff as well. That, did you see those last year? Yeah, definitely uh, cool. I think he often um, participates in Somerset Art Weeks as well, where you can go and look around all the sculptures in his garden, which is cool. Um, we have these unusual pieces over here. So I'm just going to say a little bit about this. Now, as an art gallery, there's a few things that we have to think about. For me, uh, having work that makes people go, huh, is kind of cool because a lot of people who come in here might not normally frequent an art gallery. So of course you have to have the things that people want to have in their homes that people like and want to buy. And then you have to have the things that are exceptional because they're they're intricate or because they require years and years of training before you have, you know, um, and you, ha you know, you have the wow factor and then you have the stuff that makes you think or that makes you question something or that just that you don't understand. Um, and it's Jan Alison Edwards is, is doing a, a series. Um, it's called Pond Life and it's, um, it's actually made out of things that she has pulled out of, of the pond, um, lots of natural fibres and, and stuff. It's a part of a bigger piece um, that, that she's working on and obviously she's, she's trying to, it, you know, these, these are the types of things that make me interested in being here and they inspire mm. interesting conversations. So uh, we like to just every now and then have something unexpected. Um, and I think Jan's Pond Life series here definitely fits Are that bill. Would you like bill. to see more of this? Do you know what? If she, I'd definitely be interested in mm -hmm. seeing the bigger project. I'd like but to see more of these together. Yeah, it'd be really cool, like an installation. Yeah. Like a proper one where you like go into you it. It's like immersive and yeah. you're like, that'd that be, would cool. be cool. Hear that, Jan? Well. Make loads and let yeah. us walk through them. Absolutely. Uh, this is by um, Ian James Burkett again. It's a set of 12. Uh, inspired by um, Andy Warhol's Marilyn Monroe yes. um, series. Uh, this in particular, it's called The Twelve Tribes Catch a Fire, um, and it is based, give me a moment, based on or inspired by the Whalers album Catch a Fire, funnily enough. Um, and it is a set of 12 that it comes as one, um, and they are screen print, uh, prints, liner prints, sorry on canvas and I think there's, they're hand finished as well but um, by Ian it's a little bit different to the work that we've seen of his before but but very cool mm. again colours do love, love it. it really cool and now I'm just going to bring you round to this side because this is photography which obviously to me is interesting because that's my medium my my preferred medium I should say mm -hmm. so these photographs are analog photographs um, by a lady called Maria Theresa Little. I think she's from Belgium. She came all the way over here with the prints for us to exhibit them, which was lovely. Um, but what she does is she 
merges more than one picture together um, in post. But the, the analog photography, she, yeah, they're, they're not double exposures, so to speak. They are multiple images that have been carefully combined to create these quite soft, ghostly, very kind of feely pictures. This one is my personal favorite. I feel like she's kind of calling you from another realm. And this one here is very ecstatic for me. Mm. But come near me, this one is, is, I think, my personal fave. But yeah, so I think we've managed to get round most of the gallery. Um, I'll give you a quick to the end and back. There's not much interesting going on at this time of year at that part of our, our gallery because of the weather and the light. But um, just so that you know, we have a lovely garden. It's an award-winning garden, in fact. Mm. It won an award or several this year. Yeah, it's it? currently bedded down for winter. Okay, so here we are out in our garden. Um, not looking its best because it's winter, but please come through. We've got these lovely usable spaces that are sheltered at each end and um, these really nice semicircular little seating areas. In the summer, this is all purple and they attract hawk moths. That one's a really cool plant. Um, and then at the end of the garden here, we have our workshop space. We had a poetry night here last night. Um, quite often, we'll have events, uh, workshops, talks. Come in, I'll turn the light on. Please excuse the uh, slight mess. But yes, this lovely workshop space is very versatile. It's kind of nice. You get used to the garden and stuff. Um, we've had people uh, renting it for exhibitions, renting it for workshops, talks. We've had meetings. We've had, um, we've had all sorts, actually. It's, it's been really nice seeing all the different ways people use I think somebody even used it as a rehearsal space. But for us, um, it's a great space to have our talks. Um, we've had evening events in here. Um, we've had a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> or a reception, I should say. But yeah, lovely space, rentable. If, if people need a space in town, it can be rentable for, for courses or workshops or, or solo exhibitions and stuff. Um, yeah, we're always open to ideas. So get in touch if, if you want to uh, have a look or just come take a look. We've got all the information here. Um, yeah, and then that's, that, those are our spaces. Thank you. That was a really fascinating look around. I don't know about you, but I learned some stuff going around there that I didn't know. Um, but that's what's on at the moment. What are your plans? What, where, what's the future? What's next year going to bring here at Heart of the Tribe? Okay, so, well, we close at Christmas for um, six weeks, so we'll be closed for January, which gives us a chance to get everything ready for the new year. Um, we've been learning as we go, so we're going to try some new things, some new exhibition formats and stuff. Uh, we've been very much focused on, on artists rather than themes. or So we're, we're, we're going to try some new things. Uh, we've got some solo exhibitions coming up. We've got some group exhibitions coming up. We'll be hosting workshops and stuff again. Hopefully some exciting stuff will be going on. Um, but yeah, we like I said, we'll be closed during January, reopening on February the 1st with hopefully a lovely selection of our favourites from, from this show um, and, and some new work from our core artists who have all promised us some something fresh. Speaking of whom, we haven't mentioned him, the other elephant in the room, as a John Mintra over there. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I think we, John. Talk, we talk about John enough, he can yeah, skip yeah, this one. Absolutely. <laughs> there you go, that's our John feature for the day. Well, that's absolutely superb. I really have enjoyed this, I've learnt a lot. And um, I can only urge you, ladies and gentlemen, if you are in Glastonbury, don't not come here. Make this <laughs> why you come to Glastonbury. It's a fascinating place. If Kim's not here, other staff in here are yeah. all artists, I think, are they, bar one? Yeah, but, but they're still interesting. They're still interesting to talk to, and they are knowledgeable, as is Kim, about the pictures in here. But for now, I'm going to head off. Your website is? Uh, www.heartofthetribe.com. That's easy to remember. <laughs> and there is one other thing. When you get there, scroll down a bit, and you'll see View Our 360 Tours. Because, Ta-da! Ta -da. Yours truly, ever pretty much since you opened. Yeah, well, I, th I think 90% of our exhibitions are available as a, as a 360 uh, virtual tour on our events and exhibitions page. Yeah. So if you're in America or Canada or, you know, street... And you or can't on the other here, side of the flood, yeah. Or on the other side <laughs> of the flood, and you can't get here and you want to have a look around, they're all there, from John Mitchell to Frank... Yeah. To and this show, you can look around the entirety of this show without my opinion in peace on the uh, on the website if you prefer absolutely but for now 
from her and from me. Bye-bye.